Hi, I'm Tony, and this is Long Story Short. And I've been thinking recently about a, well, a, a kind of personal belief of mine that if you use something every single day, if you rely on it for the work that you do or just your day-to-day -day existence, you ought to know at least the basics about how that thing works. You don't need to be a professional, but you should have a clue how that thing functions. In the United States, we treat cars kind of that way. Um, in most US schools, at least most of the ones that I've heard of, there's a driver's ed course. And in that driver's ed course, they talk about, at least in the ones that I took, how a car works. You know something else that almost everybody uses in their day-to-day -day life, at least here in the United States, that uh, a lot of people don't really get anything at all about how it works? Oh, one of these, a computer either a laptop or a desktop or a Mac or something like that. Most people have some interaction with these things and a lot of people don't have a clue what's underneath that lid or behind that door. So here on Long Story Short, let's, let's get down and let's get dirty and let's figure out exactly how one of these works. I'm not going to give you the uh, the engineer, the, the computer scientist course on this. We're not going to talk about binary and ones and zeros and stuff like that. But I at least want you to know, when this is all said and done, what these components do. How 13 and 14 year old kids build these. That's what we're going to tackle here. So if that interests you, stick around. We'll talk about it. talk about the parts that go into making up a PC, I'm going to work with an analogy that most people should be more familiar with. The human body. The human body only works because it has a system of organs performing its various functions. Modern PCs work in much the same way, in that a bunch of components perform tasks to give you a working device. In the human body, organ systems connect and communicate largely via the nervous system. In short, it's the network through which your brain and the rest of your body work together to make you a person. For computers, this backbone task is performed by the motherboard. This component is mounted to the inside of whatever houses the computer, whether it's something that looks like a laptop or a desktop, and contains all of the guts needed to let major components, the organs of a computer, communicate. Motherboards can generally do a bit on their own, briefly flashing some controls for fine tuning some of your computer's functions when you turn it on. Really though, a nervous system is useless without a brain, and in most regards, any computer's brain is its central processing unit, or CPU. The CPU is, at its core, an electronic device that can perform operations on some input data using commands. A super simple example would be asking a CPU to add two numbers. You give it some info, tell it what to do with that info, and it gives you a result. Modern CPUs, of course, have many inputs and many commands. They do the complex tasks expected of them by performing tasks very quickly. The earliest Intel CPUs performed hundreds of thousands of operations each second. At the time of this video's recording, most desktop and laptop CPUs perform between 3 and 4 billion operations per second. Now, the CPU sits in its own special connector on the motherboard, but you likely won't ever see it because it's probably underneath some sort of cooling system. Just about everything a computer does generates a lot of heat. While the CPU does much of a computer's thinking, some tasks, such as visual processing, take a ludicrous amount of specialized processing power. Kind of like how there are parts of your brain devoted to processing the visual signals from your eyes. For this, many higher quality desktops and laptops will include dedicated graphics processing units, or GPUs, which are less flexible in what types of operations they can perform, but are incredibly fast and efficient at processing things like video games, image rendering, and some serious number crunching. PCs without dedicated graphics cards generally have lower power GPUs integrated into their CPUs. With these components, a computer has most of its processing power, but that's all pretty useless as far as we're concerned without some sort of memory. For short-term memory, computers use something called RAM, or Random Access Memory. This is a component that the computer can read and write information to extremely quickly, forming your computer's current state. If your computer's waking mind were held somewhere, and no, computers aren't conscious, but work with me here, it would be the RAM. 
juggling all sorts of programs and operations just to be awake. Unfortunately, this stuff is expensive and it can only hold data while it's receiving power. For bigger, longer term storage, something different is needed. Hard disk drives hold large amounts of data and the technology is relatively cheap. That said, they have moving parts and often fail with time and they're extremely slow to access compared to RAM. Solid state drives, on the other hand, are significantly more expensive, for now, but they offer no moving parts and much faster speeds. Still, they're not as fast as RAM. In both cases, everything you saved your computer will find its way to this type of storage. At this point, we've got a computer that can do all the major computer things, except turn on. Because you see, a person can have an amazing brain, nervous system, killer memory, but they'd still be dead as hell without a heart. For a computer, this is the power supply unit, or PSU. Just like your body needs blood regulated and pumped through it, computers need a steady, regulated flow of electricity to all the components we talked about earlier in order to function. In a desktop, the power supply is usually a box mounted on the top or the bottom of the case. In fact, if your computer is plugged in, that cable is almost definitely plugged directly into the power supply. Make sure it's turned on if you're having trouble starting your computer. For laptops, some game consoles, and other smaller computing devices, the PSU components are often held in a brick that sits on the charger. In both cases, it's full of components that manage electricity. It's worth noting here that this is the one part of your computer that, besides installing or uninstalling, you really shouldn't mess with. Power supplies can hold deadly electric charges, so don't try to take them apart, even when they're not plugged in. And that is really the gist of it. Those are the major components that make up your computer. There are other parts, of course. Motherboards come with all kinds of connectors, allowing for additional storage, specialized drives for DVDs, SD cards, more USB ports, stuff like that. The case, too, is a component in its own way, helping to manage airflow and cables, and obviously keeping your parts safe. At a simple level, though, this is how most computers today work, and it doesn't take a degree in engineering to put one together. It's more like putting together a model with parts either bought online or at a hobby store. Here's a quick recap to really hammer this idea in. The motherboard forms the backbone or nervous system of the computer, connecting all the other stuff together. The CPU and the GPU are the main brains of the computer, processing general stuff and visuals respectively. Of course, you'll rarely see them because they're stuck behind all kinds of cooling and are sometimes integrated into the same thing. RAM is your computer's short-term waking memory for whatever is going on right this moment. It's super fast, but expensive and needs constant power to work. Storage drives such as hard drives and solid state drives are used for larger and longer term storage, but they're slower to access. The power supply unit or PSU is not unlike your computer's heart in that it handles the supply of power that your components need to do things. Finally, all of that stuff, except maybe the power supply, lives inside a case. And you'll notice that we never talked about these. These are not computers. They're monitors, screens, different things. Sometimes they'll put computers inside monitors and call it an all-in-one, but that's a different thing. Thank you so much for watching my second video now here on, uh, on YouTube and on Long Story Short. I know that one didn't get super, super technical for any of you who may be coming from a background in this kind of stuff. Um, that wasn't really the point of it. I wanted this video to just kind of make the internals of a computer a little bit less scary. It really often surprises me just how little people know about how um, computers and stuff like that in general work. Considering most people, I think, today use a computer or a laptop or something similar in their day-to-day -day life. So I'm hoping that this comparison to a human body, something that a lot of people at least vaguely understand, will kind of help to take out some of the mystery. I don't think that anybody who watches just this is going to know enough to, say, build their own computer tomorrow, but it's a start. And it means that if you go to push your power button and nothing happens, you can hopefully feel a little bit less powerless in that situation. Maybe when you go to do that, you might think, oh, well, the computer did absolutely nothing. Maybe that's a problem with the power supply or 
the computer turned on, but it didn't load up Windows. So maybe something's up with the motherboard because it's not getting that far. Um, again, it's just kind of about eliminating the mystery, making it a little bit less of a magic box. Even though, in a lot of ways, a computer is a, it's a pretty magical box. Anyway, thank you all for watching another one of my videos. I really hope you all appreciated it. If you have any thoughts, if there's anything that I got wrong, um, please let me know. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. I'm going to try to do them every week, um, at least for this semester, hopefully for longer, because uh, I think this is a pretty cool thing. Again, thank you. I'm Tony, and this has been Long Story Short.